What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Crypto Lifestyle channel. I'm Ryan from AI on Crypto, filling in today for Francis, and I am stoked because today we get to talk about the biggest decentralized exchange in all of cryptocurrency, one of the most important DeFi projects ever created, bar none, Uniswap. As we know, they've recently rolled out version three, so we're gonna talk about what that means, what are some of the new features and benefits, and more importantly, what does it mean for the Uni token? So we're gonna dive in right now. Woo <laughs> Crypto Lifestyle, baby. If it's your first time here, this is the Crypto Lifestyle channel. Here we talk about decentralization, Bitcoin mass adoption, and other crypto related things that can bank us coin. We pump out daily videos covering all of the latest crypto trends, the altcoin gems, and everything you need to know to be the king or queen of crypto. So if you're down with that, subscribe to the channel and tap that bell so you don't miss a thing. I'm Ryan with AI on Crypto. If you want to check out my content, you can use the link in the description below. So let's dive in to Uniswap V3. Before we get too deep, though, I do just have to remind everybody that everything we say on this channel is for information and entertainment purposes only. We are not professional financial advisors. Please consult a professional before making any financial decisions. Guys, before we dive too deep into the new features and benefits of version three, I think it would be worth it to just kind of recap how Uniswap came to be, its brief but very impactful history, and what this all means leading up to this version three rollout so that we can really get a good gauge of where we are and where we're going with Uniswap. So in 2017, crypto genius Hayden Adams began to create Uniswap. At the start of it all, it was just him and his bold idea to come up with the earth shattering concept of an automated market maker and a decentralized exchange. At this point, he had nothing more than a proof of concept but he began going to more and more crypto conventions and eventually met people like Vitalik Buterin and gained support with his ideas. And through tireless work and dedication, Hayden began to accomplish his goals and was able to roll out a live version of Uniswap V1 in November of 2018. And this was the catalyst that really led to the summer of DeFi back then and really was the beginning, in my opinion, of us coming out of that most recent bear cycle. Version one served primarily as a proof of concept of automated market makers. At this point, you could stake liquidity, but it would only be with an Ethereum and an ERC-20 pair, and you could only swap Ethereum for an ERC-20 token. There was no intermingling of ERC-20 and ERC-20. So at that point in version one, the user experience was certainly somewhat limited. Now the real breakthroughs began to come in May of 2020. Uniswap version two introduced new features and optimizations, setting the stage for exponential growth in AMM adoption. Less than one year since its launch, V2 has facilitated over 135 billion in trading volume, ranking as one of the largest cryptocurrency spot exchanges in the world. With this version two upgrade, you are now able to swap ERC-20 tokens with other ERC-20 tokens without having to go back into ETH. And you could also begin to stake different pairings at this point. In addition to these upgrades, they did what was at that point the biggest airdrop in the history of cryptocurrency when every user who had interacted with a Uniswap app via MetaMask or another wallet got 400 Uni tokens. These tokens are $38 as of the filming of this video, so 38 times 400 is one hell of an airdrop. That was a big moment in crypto. I had three MetaMask wallets at the time doing things on Uniswap, so I got 1200 in Uni, and I still remember that night like it was yesterday. But all of the success with Uniswap V2 did not come without consequences, as Uniswap quickly became the most forked blockchain protocol in all of cryptocurrency. 
With its absolutely groundbreaking success, it seemed that every layer one blockchain out there, as long as many others on the Ethereum blockchain, began to create their own version of the Uniswap clone. And now, with big competition in the form of SushiSwap, PancakeSwap, and others, Uniswap absolutely had to bring the thunder when rolling out their V3. And they did just that at the start of this month, May 2021, when they rolled out V3. So let's take a look at some of the features and upgrades of this rollout. First of all, they introduced something called concentrated liquidity. This is giving individual LPs granular control over what price ranges their capital is allocated to. Individual positions are aggregated together in a single pool, forming one combined curve for users to trade against. They're also allowing for multiple fee tiers, which allows LPs to be appropriately compensated for taking on varying degree of risk. In other words, if you're staking USDC against DAI, two stable coins, you're going to earn the smallest fee because you're taking the smallest risk because with two assets like that, pegged together, there's no chance for impermanent loss. But let's say it's a new token that just launched one of these altcoin gems that has the potential to just 10x in a week. Well, you're going to get a much higher fee for providing that liquidity because there's a much greater risk of an impermanent loss. So in other words, those taking the higher risky pools are going to get compensated more, which is big. And they claim that these features of multiple fee tiers along with concentrated liquidity makes Uniswap V3 the most flexible and efficient AMM ever designed. Now on V3, LPs can provide liquidity with up to 4,000 times the capital efficiency relative to Uniswap V2, earning way higher returns on their capital. And this newfound capital efficiency is going to pave the way for low slippage trade execution that can surpass both centralized exchanges and stablecoin based AMMs. Now LPs can significantly increase their exposure to preferred assets and reduce their downside risk. LPs can now sell one asset for another by adding liquidity to a price range entirely above or below market price, approximating a fee earning limit order that executes along a smooth curve. In addition to this, on the Oracle side now, Uniswap's Oracles are now far easier and cheaper to integrate. V3 Oracles are now capable of providing time-weighted average prices on demand for any period within the last nine days. This removes the need for integrators or checkpoint historical values, making it much faster. Okay guys, now hopping over to their website, we can dive a little bit deeper into some of these new concepts. So now with V3, in the concentrated capital, LPs can concentrate their capital within custom price ranges, providing greater amounts of liquidity at desired prices. In doing so, LPs can construct individual price curves as seen in this animation that reflect their own preferences. Now users can trade against the combined liquidity of all individual curves with no gas costs to increase per liquidity provider. Now users will be able to trade against the combined liquidity of all individual curves with no gas cost increase per liquidity provider. Trading fees collected at a given price range are split pro rata by LPs proportional to the amount of liquidity they contribute to that range. And this gives rise to capital efficiency. So by concentrating their liquidity, LPs can provide the same liquidity depth as V2 within specified price ranges while putting far less capital at risk. The capital save can be held externally, invested in different assets, deposited elsewhere in DeFi, or used to increase exposure in Uniswap. Now looking at this tool on the screen, we can take a $150,000 investment and kind of see what this price range tool can do. So you can see that at any point along this curve, you're making more in fees than you were on version two, so that's great. But playing with it, you can see that as you increase the price range in which you provide liquidity, you're earning a lower fee. To get that fee up, you can shrink that price range and really concentrate that capital. So at launch, capital efficiency gains will max out at 4,000 times for the LPs providing liquidity within a single 0.1 percentage price range. 
The V3 pull factor is technically capable of supporting ranges as granular as 0.02%, translating to a maximum 20,000 times capital efficiency gains relative to V2. And all of this is going to give rise to a concept called active liquidity. Now, what this means is that if a market price moves outside an LP specified price range, their liquidity is effectively removed from the pool and is no longer earning fees. In this state, a LP's liquidity is composed entirely of the less valuable of the two assets until the market price moves back into their specified range. And with this comes the ability to do range orders. V3's LP customizability opens up novel order features to complement market orders. They're calling them range orders. Now LPs can deposit a single token in a custom price range above or below the current price. If the market price enters into their specified range, they sell one asset for another along a smooth curve while earning swap fees in the process. Another big change to V3 is non-fungible liquidity. So they're taking the concept behind NFTs and bringing it to liquidity. So as a byproduct of a per LP custom price curve, liquidity positions are no longer going to be fungible and are not represented as ERC20 tokens in the core protocol. Instead, LP positions will be represented by non-fungible tokens. However, common shared positions can be made fungible via peripheral contacts through other partner protocols. Additionally, trading fees are no longer automatically reinvested back into the pool on the LP's behalf. We also have the three tiers of flexible fees based on the riskiness of the pairings advanced price articles for faster exchanges of information and a better AMM experience. Another big change is the business source licensing effect. Okay guys, so with version two, it was such a groundbreaking protocol that it became the most forked protocol ever. And they were copycats and clones everywhere you turn your head. Now here with Uniswap version three, because they're launching under a business source license, other protocols can't copy it the way they did in the past because of copyright issues. But the ecosystem is going to lend out their licensing to entities that want that <clears throat> to entities that contribute to the ecosystem. And who's going to select this? Well, the uni token holders via the governance model. And by the way, the Uniswap DAO could be the most important governance community in all of crypto. Why is that? Well, guys, we all know that DAO is a big buzzword these days. We know that governance is a hot button. Most protocols you see nowadays, when you go to the tokenomics section of the token, it says down the line, introduce governance features. But guys, governance only matters if the people care about the protocol. If some project launches and they have a community of a thousand people and they really have no use case, well, who gives a crap if you can vote in the ecosystem? But Uniswap is the most widely used decentralized exchange in the world. This is an incredibly important ecosystem and nobody can deny that, which means the governance feature is incredibly important. And because of that, I definitely see tremendous long-term value for the uni token let me give you an example of why this governance feature could be so impactful with this project in particular at any point in time and this is just an example but at any point in time the token holders of uni can decide that just for holding the uni token you're going to get a percentage of all transaction fees if that proposal came up for a vote then every uni token holder would get to vote on whether or not they deserve passive income just for holding the token. And with a protocol this widely adopted and this used, that governance feature is just so valuable. Now, when you look at all of these V3 upgrades across the board, it's definitely obvious that they're targeting liquidity providers. And these decentralized exchanges are only as good as the liquidity they have. So the fact that they're making efforts to make it more attractive to provide liquidity is great to the long-term success of Uniswap. But what about the actual swap app? Has that you can see that the app is a little bit smaller in screen than the other one, but for the most part, it looks pretty similar. 
You can control your options at the top with the first tab being the swap feature. To the right of that is for the liquidity providers. Next to that is where you go to vote. You can see right now there's three recent proposals that have been active on the protocol. And then of course we have the chart features that we've come to know and love. Now guys, in the short term, not all of the liquidity has migrated over to B3 and a lot of it is still on version two. So occasionally you might be trying to swap an asset that you have to still use the old version two. And if you need to do that, it's actually a very easy process and I'm going to show you real quick on the screen. So a token that I follow pretty closely in my personal portfolio is the Gala token from the Gala Games protocol. And right now it's at a level where I want to scoop a little bit more up. So real quick on this video, I'm just going to get about 500 or so dollars worth. And you can see that right now the price impact is too high. And just below that, you get a little notification pop up that says get a better price on V2. All you have to do is click that. And then you get to swap for your tokens. And I'm going to buy $571 worth of Gala token. And it's that easy, guys. So Uniswap version three has rolled out a lot of cool features, especially on the liquidity providing side, but we're only halfway through the rollout because there's still that layer two launch onto optimism that's going to take place in the near future. And guys, once that happens, you're going to have all of the amazing new liquidity providing features we just discussed, but you'll be doing it gas free with almost no transaction cost. And once all these things are combined, well, let's just say I'm feeling a little bit sorry for all the forks out there trying to compete with the unstoppable juggernaut that is Uniswap. Alrighty, y'all, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. And if you forgot to do it at the start of this thing, Go ahead and hit subscribe and tap that bell because we definitely want to see you on the next video. And like the man Francis always says, until next time, you're on your own, man.